key that I'm going to discuss affects you, your business, because your business is about people. It's about our people. And you need to see yourselves as enablers to our people. Now, when I talk about enablers to our people, our people in Africa, we are a difficult bunch. We change policies daily. We have elections and we're still worried about the results a few weeks later. We are a, a tough bunch. So to be able to do business with us takes a very special person. And you need to, you need to identify yourself as a very unique individual if you want to trade and do business in Africa. It takes uchspa, I call it. But you need to be very wary of what happens and you need to be very, very innovative in your approach in how you're going to do business when you start doing business in Africa. And those of you who are already involved, Oracle, for example, they've been through the ropes. They've, they're streetwise or Africa-wise. Now, in South Africa, some time ago, we initiated a policy uh, called Black Economic Empowerment. Very important policy because we had to, we had to uh, uh, look at the inequalities that were taking place and how we would address those inequalities, and we, we implemented Black Economic Empowerment policies that would bring the balance right. Now, I've, I've got this little video clip that I want you to watch regarding Black Economic Empowerment. Uh, and, and being clever in doing business in Africa. And this should illustrate what I'm trying to say. Can we just dim the lights and, and, and show that clip, please? By the way, that ad didn't run for very long, it was pulled off the circuit, but a brilliant illustration of being innovative in how to go about addressing the issues that face us throughout this continent. And I'm passionate about Africa. I, I believe that I'm as African as every other species in this continent, and I will endeavor to do everything that will help promote sustainable development. But you are welcome to read more about me on page 10 of your big packs. Um, all my details is in there, what I do, what my company does. And I will be the beneficiary, not me, my organization will be the beneficiary of the charity evening tonight, which is the casino. And you must bring your checkbooks tonight. Technology and socioeconomic development is the topic that I want to talk about. And I'm going to go through this briefly. How do I... The red one? Oh, the, the, oh, there we go. And one of the, the biggest issues facing, so facing Africa at the moment is the lack of communication, the lack of integration, and the lack of participation. And it's in this context that we come back to what we refer to in South Africa as Bato Pele. And that means our people first. And today's presentations and the, the trend of yesterday's presentations all came back to one thing, the customer and our people. Because without the people, you've got no business. But the far-reaching implications into our people are much greater than what you can imagine. Because it's all about leadership at the end of the day. How do we lead our people? And I, for many years, focused on local economic development as the key to lifting our people up and capacitating our people in this continent. But I missed the boat because I realized that local economic development 
whether it's rural or in the, in the urban areas, it doesn't matter. Local economic development depends on investment. Without investment in the community, you cannot have local economic development. But what inspires local economic development? Sound service delivery, customer satisfaction. And when I say service delivery, I'm not just talking about government. I'm talking about every possible entity in any community adds value to service delivery. The hotel that you check into, if it does not deliver on service delivery, you're going to find another hotel. That means you're taking your investment elsewhere. You're referring your investment elsewhere. But you cannot have service delivery unless you've got sound leadership. And that's the key. So our focus lately is on ensuring that our people understand the leadership abilities within themselves and that the buck stops here. And we must stop pointing the fingers at other people for lack of. And it's therefore that I am going to overemphasize, and I know that you might be familiar with the terminology, the triple bottom line, but the world powers out there have introduced the triple bottom line as part and parcel of a guarantee that your business will be around in time to come. But what is the triple bottom line? And please bear with me. I'm just going to touch on the sound economics, the environmental impact, but I want to get down to the social obligation. That's the key of my topic. But I love to illustrate the triple bottom line in my own life at grassroots level because I have to adhere to the triple bottom line. My credit rating, the fact that I'm not listed on the black thing, the black book, or the black book, means that I can actually walk into a store and buy on credit. So my, my bank situation and my financial situation is sound. Number one, very important. But my environmental issues, how do I impact on the environment? Am I pro the environment? Do I use fertilizers or anti-sprays uh, for my garden that is uh, environmental friendly? Do I promote uh, uh, recycling in my household? Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yes, I adhere to that. But when it comes to my social obligation, do I really care for the people around me? And to illustrate this, I would request my domestic director, which is my maid that helps me clean the house, etc., and I'll pay her a reasonable living wage for her services. But I would unpack all my old clothes out of my wardrobe because I'm going to dispose of them by giving them to the church. And I will say, Miriam, clock one, clock one means come here, help me carry these boxes to my car because I'm going to give them to the church. And I thought I felt good. Little did I know that Miriam needed those clothes more than the church. And the issue at stake here is, is that I don't take care of Miriam. She's not going to take care of me. And come a conflict situation, I could be the worst off because I need Miriam as much as she needs me. But I need to take care of those immediately in my environment. And therefore, if I say to you that the triple bottom line is relevant to your business, I'm saying to you, the social impact your business is having on the community is vital. And here I'm talking about you must take care of your staff first, but then you must expand your interest in your community to make sure that the community will take care of your business. I want to make this statement. Vodafone com phone companies, phone companies that are uh, branding themselves in the social world, saying that we are building schools here, clinics there, and getting the, the, the advertising or the marketing value out of their social environment are the ones that are winning the contracts. And I'm talking about the contracts, the, the people buying or utilizing that network service providers' services. Keep that in mind. But the social obligations with the community, I just want to touch on, this goes back some time when, when Lord, Lord Holm and Richard Watts used the following definition for corporate social investment. I beg your pardon. Corporate social responsibility 
is a continuing commitment by business to behave ethically and to contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of your workforce and their families, because that's the, those are the direct communities involved, as well as improving the quality of life of the local community and the society at large. PPPs was mentioned on a number of occasions. Let me tell you that PPPs is a solution to a host of issues when it comes to social involvement. Don't discard the fact that your involvement as a, as a service provider or a company in a community within a context of a PPP with the government and with, and when I say government, I'm talking about the local government and with the community will make an immense difference. Long-term sustainability is what we're looking for. If your organization is involved in a community project for more than three years, with your funding and your subsidies that are going into this project. If after three years that, proje that project in the community is not sustainable and cannot contain itself, you're wasting your time. Consider the implications of what you're doing and whether or not what you are doing is market-related or whether or not it's long, to long liberty and sustainable to the community. I'm not going to go through this. I'm going to flash through this quickly because we are um, running through time. But there's a growing interest, therefore, in business to take a lead in addressing the issues which have an interest where national governments, and when I say national governments, I'm also talking about provincial and local governments, have failed to come up with a solution. The onus is on you as corporations and as businesses that want to get involved to Goya. You know the phrase Goya? Goya means get off your ass. Accept my apologies if I offended everybody, but I love that phrase Goya and I use it in government circles often because we have to Goya to get things going. How? Finding or getting involved with communities, the skills and competencies that can be leveraged to support and drive an agenda. How do we identify these social projects that are available to us? Now, I'm not going to go through this, but you can, you can actually identify, because I always use the frame measure. You need to measure the existing situation in that community to determine what they've got before you can determine where you want to go with this. And then you can match the two and bring them together and then find the, the shortages that need to be addressed. So I'm just going to flash through this and... Now, in this case, I'm saying you need to identify the projects that have to be addressed, prioritize these projects, and then how could we ensure good corporate governance in African corporations? Assuring effective leadership as a key to successful corporate governance. Ensuring effective reporting as a key to transparency. Ensuring communication, and that's where you come in, is to ensure that this communication is available to the people. That will give sustainable corporate governance. I am extremely ecstatic to have been here to, to listen to the attempts that are being made to make it available to the people. The fact that India reversed the process. They said, let's see what the, the people can afford and now see how we can meet that affordability. Awesome. That's what's needed. You have to come up with innovative ideas on how to get the message across to the people. Communication in this country, in this continent, has cost us dearly. I spoke at a conference on Friday on the Credit Act in South Africa. I mentioned it last night to Jonas from KPMG, that is the Credit Act impacting on development, business development in South Africa? And my outcome was, no, it's not. It's the understanding of the Credit Act that it impacts. We don't understand the Credit Act. Our people, you, you guys are talking 3Gs, MGs, uh, colored teeth, Bluetooth, and... I 
I've got no idea what you're talking about. But I love it, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm willing to learn. And I'm not saying that we, us laymen out in the streets, all we want to do is pick up the phone and say, Hello, Mommy. Are you all right? Thank you, Mommy. See you just now. Bye-bye. That's what it's about. And if we can get that bridge gap, please hear what I'm saying to you. That in South Africa, we're spoiled with bandwidth. My organization, is the Foundation for the Development of Africa's website, is highly, highly ranked on Google because it's pure text-based. We haven't got butterflies flying across the screen or little coins spinning across and then a welcome message with little dancing girls. Oh, it's pure text. We go straight to the kill, straight to the message, what the people want to know, what's happening. And it's that kind of communication that needs to happen because in the Sudan, they do not have bandwidth. And just to connect to the internet, to the internet is a celebratory process. Now we've got to wait 40 minutes for a butterfly to download on the website. doesn't work that way. Consider these limitations in Africa when you do your work. Consider the fact that English, for example, is a third language in most of our countries. And when the peer review me mechanism was written by the NEPAD gurus, and I got hold of it in 2004, I couldn't believe that this document was presented to our people in Africa as a guideline. And I rewrote it in an African English, and it was published in numerous magazines and, and newspapers worldwide, because it just, I made it available to our people. I challenge you to go to Google, and those of you online now, go to Google, Google me for one. I'm, last night we confirmed it with KPMG present as my auditors. I was number one in the world, my name. <laughs> Proud of that fact. Don't ask me how I got there, but I'm there. The Foundation's proactiveness is part and parcel of that. 99% of our interaction takes place throughout the rest of Africa via the internet because that's the only form of communication most of our people have got in the rest of Africa to the outside world now I'm talking about. I'm finished. PPPs, I said to you that's the key to Africa's development. And I do, that's pr private public partnerships. Consider that in anything you do. In that new network that int in India introduced too, PPP is a solution to that problem because it's transparent. But in my case, a PPP, it's a process of positive participation. And it's with that mindset that we need to go ahead and make a difference to this continent. Let's create the change that is necessary to turn this continent into what it can be. I think I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Questions, comments from the audience? I want to get us started, Peter. Can you tell us a bit about what are some of your plans, targets, oh. goals, visions for the next Okay, Whatever, three to five years. Thank you so much yeah. for that. I'll give you three minutes. The Foundation's mandate is to facilitate processes that will create sound uh, sustainability in the context. And all we do is we match make. We just bring people together. We, we bring A to B and B to C, etc. But we do not get involved with the actual information or the, de the deal itself. It's got nothing to do with that. And if the deal succeeds and it creates uh, uh, lots of money for everybody, good luck to you. It's got no, we're not interested in getting further involved. One key issue that we're working on is to bring together Africa's business so that Africa's business can talk with one voice. Because currently, even with our trading blocks, the ECOWAS and the, the uh, SADAC, etc., we're not achieving what we want here. And we're still being uh, depressed in the market. And we need to talk with one voice. And through services that are available and also the fact that the Gauteng province, which is where we are now, has been awarded the communication center for the 2010 World Cup soccer. We are busy negotiating a possible deal that that communication center could become the, the Africa trade center that will link, ex extensively link all the commercial attaches in the world to this Africa Trade Center so that we can with one voice speak and get the message out instantly. So we've got vision. 
And without vision, we've got nothing. Do I believe in a united Africa, a united States of Africa? Damn all right, I do. I'll probably never see it in my lifetime. But if we haven't got that vision of a united Africa, we've got nothing. I'm honored to have shared with you. Thank you so much for caring for Africa. Thank you for being yeah, because your dollars and your rupees and your dumaras, Dumo, these guys from Dubai yeah, as well. Dinas. Dinas. Thank, d- d- Dirams. 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 Thanks for bringing all that gas. May you take back fond memories of this country and may you ever, forever consider Africa as a great investment opportunity. Thank you very, very much.